this morning we are looking very quickly at the subject hope and faith hope and faith we have a threefold objective number one it is understanding the relationship between hope and faith understanding the relationship between hope and faith second will understand the difference between hope and faith and third will understand what it takes to shift from hope to faith the relationship between hope and faith the difference between hope and faith and shifting from hope to faith the scriptures made it abundantly clear that both hope and faith are critical necessities to the destiny of man both hope and faith critical vital necessities to the life and destiny of the child of God the Bible also made it clear that hope travels in the company of faith hope and faith move together where you find faith most times you must find hope thirdly the Bible also made it clear that the end objective of both hope and faith are similar, if not the same. The end objective, hope is seeking to achieve literally the same thing that faith seeks to achieve. The question then is, what is the difference? I'll mention three of them in this service. First, faith lays the foundation while, sorry, hope lays the foundation while faith does the construction. In the journey of belief in God, in the journey of expectancy, hope lays the foundation while faith does the construction. Hope without faith, therefore, is like foundation without construction. The foundation is laid. I believe God will do it. I know it will happen. That is faith. Making it happen. That is, sorry. I believe it, is, it will happen. That is hope. Making it happen. That is faith. So hope lays the foundation. Faith does the construction. Number two, hope pictures the possibility while faith captures the reality. Faith just hope picture 
captures the possibility. Faith captures the reality. The meaning again is hope fantasizes with the possibilities and faith crystallizes the realities. In hope, there is a fantasization, a fantasy with the possibility. Oh, this is possible. But faith moves a bit further to crystallize the reality. So hope without faith again is like fantasizing with possibilities without crystallizing the realities. Is anybody getting anything here at all? Is it getting clear? Thirdly, hope wishes for a desirable outcome in life, let's say. Hope wishes for a desirable outcome, a desirable or a better outcome. Faith wish, hope wishes for a desirable or better outcome in life while faith works out. Faith works out a desirable or a better outcome in life. Hope wishes that outcome that is desirable should happen. Faith works it out. Hope wishes it. Faith works it out. Hope is a little bit passive. Faith is active. I didn't say timid. It is passive without being timid. But faith is active. And the two are necessary. Having said these three so far, let us get two things as summary before we move to what it takes to move from hope to faith. Summary number one. Faith does not and cannot exist without hope. Faith does not and cannot exist without hope. Now, so we are not downplaying hope at all. This is the meaning. First, that it is impossible to be hopeless and be faith-filled. No, no hopeless person can be faith-filled. It is impossible to be hopeless and be faith-filled. Because scripture said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So there is hope inside faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. There is hope inside faith. Faith does not and cannot exist without hope. It is impossible to be hopeless and be faith-filled. But this is the second summary. Hope cannot produce without faith. That is, I am hoping, I am hoping that one day things will change. I am hoping that one day I'll get a job. I'm hoping, just hoping alone. Hope alone. Hope alone. Hope cannot produce without faith. The meaning of that is first, to remain at the level of hope alone is to remain in perpetual expectation without resulting manifestation. Say that again. To remain at the level of hope alone is to remain in perpetual expectation 
without resulting or what we call in medicine resultant manifestation without a resultant manifestation a resulting manifestation that is you are, you are expecting permanently and nothing is manifest that's frustration that's frustration I'm expecting, I am expecting. That's total frustration. Having said that, this is the crux of the matter. How do we turn hope into faith? Or what do you do to move from hope to faith? Hope is necessary, but you don't drive a car on gear one. All of you who are driving automatic, you better go and learn manual. That is that is that is when you when you are a driver. You are not a driver until you know how to drive gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, and gear five if possible. You are you, you are you are because you just put, you just put your gear on a drive and just be going and say you are a driver. You are not a driver. Even, even a, a small child can, can put. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, I only know how to drive uh, automatic. I say, you don't know how to drive. You know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, so, I, because I couldn't use that illustration now, because you put car in gear one, and then you just, and then you keep on accelerating, and you don't change to gear two, you just, say, 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 you, are, you, are, you are troubled, you are tormenting me. Let's move higher. Vroom. Vroom. And then you remain at in gear to say, Vroom. He say, don't waste my life. Vroom. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's how it is. To remain in the realm of hope alone is to remain in that kind of tension. You need to change that gear. What do you do to shift from hope to faith? Number one. This is very, very important. Possess valid scriptural reasons for your hope. Possess valid scriptural reasons. Reason or reasons for your hope. I am expecting something. Do you have any scripture that backs that expectation? I believe my story will change. That belief is standing on what? That is what shifts hope to faith. First Peter chapter 3 verse 15. First Peter chapter 3 verse 15. The Bible said, it said, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with, with meekness and fear. Every hope must be backed with reason to produce at the end. To produce at the end. What is the meaning of that? You are not just hoping or expecting and leaving the outcome of your hope to chance. You are not just hoping, okay, well, come see, come sir. One, one day, one way. One with the other, other things must change. No, no, no. That is chance. That is trial by error. No, 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 don't live like that. Don't live with, no, it's not an amoeba motion, random motion. A valid reason. You are not just hoping and leaving the outcome of your hope to chance. Your hope is based on and backed by strong scriptural reasons. And once hope becomes backed by word, it has shifted to faith. And that moves God to action. It moves God to action. It moves God to action. Because God, anywhere God sees his word, he moves. One day I must marry. One day I must marry. One day I must marry. What is your reason? He made them male and female. I am a female. There must be a male for me. That is the scripture. The Lord God 
is my son, he is my shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Psalm 84 verse 11. Husband is a good thing. Wife is a good thing. Because he said, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. And no good thing will he withhold. On the basis of that, no devil can stop me from getting married. And I shall have my children. Children must flow. What is my reason? He created them and said, be fruitful, multiply. Replenish the earth. Replenish the earth, multiply, multiply multiply and then when jesus christ came the matter shifted level do you know that the birth of jesus christ is an attack on barrenness do you know that i have said it before but if you didn't hear let me say it again it's one of the worst attacks on barrenness because by being born without a man meeting a woman by bypassing the normal reproductive processes, by bypassing the process of the male spermatozoa uh, meeting uh, and fertilizing the female ovum, by bypassing that process and bringing out flesh and blood, Abraham met his wife. All the people that gave birth to children in the Bible, apart from Jesus Christ, nobody met anybody. How shall this thing be since I know the man? Forget about man in this matter. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. And that holy thing which you shall bring forth shall be called the son of the highest. So it cancelled every reason. Low sperm count as reason for no child. Uh, uh, endometriosis, block fallopian tube, block efficient tube, block Colossian tube, block Galatians tube, block, block Corinthians tube. It cancelled, it cancelled every reason. Fibroid, it cancelled he cancelled hyperprolactinemia. He cancelled every single reason. And to confirm what I'm saying. How many barren women came to Jesus to ask for prayer when he was on the earth? You know, women trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Because it's a major societal matter. They must ask for if they were there. The blind came to Jesus. The deaf came to Jesus. The lame came. Dead came. Not one barren woman came. To me, his appearance wiped out barrenness. For hey! Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. For at least for that season, at least for that season, at least for that season. And by the same revelation I announced to you, every curse of fruitlessness, empty-handedness is deleted now. It is wiped out now. Give the Lord the praise and take your seat. So don't just hope, don't just be hoping. Gather reasons for hope. Number two, boldly declare and announce your word-based hope expectation continually. Boldly declare and announce your word-based hope expectations continually, 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 boldly declare, boldly announce. This is what I'm expecting. Psalm 91 verse 104, the psalmist speaking said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence, and so on and so forth. I will say of the Lord, do you believe that no devil can make you stranded in life? 
Don't just hope it. Say it. Don't just wish it declared. Now hear this. Two things I'm going to say. I've said first one in the last service. What you believe is not real until it is declared. God came, saw darkness and spoke light. Light became real. Even though God believed there should be light, he had to speak light. What you believe is not real until it is declared. Another way to say it is, what is real in your heart does not become real in your life until it is spoken out of your mouth. Say it again. What is real in your heart does not become real in your life until it is spoken out of your mouth. Spoken out of your mouth. Spoken out of your mouth. When, you, when it is in your heart, you are still hoping. When it is coming out of your mouth, you are now fitting. <laughs> you didn't hear what I just said. If it remains in your heart, you are hoping. If it is coming out of your mouth, you are now fitting. That was what 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 said. But we all, having the same spirit of faith according as it is written we have believed we have hoped we have hoped now we have spoken therefore have i spoken we have been believing it we have been hoping it but now we have to start faithing it when we say that a structure like this will be built many people didn't believe but it didn't matter we kept on faithing it and it came to pass. This whole place will soon be populated with iconic structures. This whole Lord's garden you are seeing. On my left, right hand side here, there are two seven floor, seven floors coming up here, office towers. That is on the other side on your way to the garden. After that, you have um, um, a shopping mall where people can, little shopping shepherd's place where you can just buy things. After that, in front of the main garden one is a seven floor five star hotel that's on that side there and then all the way from the stretch of the garden all the way one kilometer all the way to the end at the very end of it you have a beach because at that place you have the water entering the land and coming out with palm trees and beach sand and then at the end of it you have two filling stations at the back there I am not, I'm not just talking. These are things that have already been approved. The whole design is approved. Then we have a medical center right here. Right? And then we have the school and the, and, and the secondary schools and all that here. Is there anything I'm still forgetting? There are many, many, many other things that are just there. All of them will just rise up like trees in a short while. stop you from saying it no power can stop you from seeing it and God said and it was so and God said let there be light and it was so and God said and it was so if the devil cannot stop you from saying it no devil can stop you from seeing it shout the loudest amen You came on a very nice road this morning, isn't it? Before Monday evening, that road will be lighted with powerful street lights. <laughs> I'm not saying before next month. I'm saying before the next 24 hours. It's just light from the road all the way. With a very serious fountain at the, at the entrance there. Big lighting to show the devil a city set on a hill cannot be he. Hey! 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 I speak by prophecy to someone here. Your life that is set on the hill, no devil can hide you.
Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Boldly declare, announce. Now, everything I'm mentioning that is going to be on this ground are for the benefit of the people of God. Every single thing is just like um, a one-stop center. When you come, Many of the things you would have been looking for everywhere you can find around. A children's park is somewhere there along the line where children can enjoy their lives. And you know children like to enjoy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Children's church also is almost starting. Some people have started making commitments and so on. Beloved brothers, say them. Part of what, what I just said now is deliberate. I said it so you can hear, so the devil can hear, so the witches and lizards can hear, and so that God himself can hear that. <laughs> hey! Hey! Give him a shout of victory! And of course, our medical university is on the way coming. Yes, 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 yes. Medical school, if Jesus tarries to come very, very soon, actually. MBBS, medicine, surgery, dentistry, um, physiotherapy, radiology, radiography, um, nursing and midwifery, BSc nursing, and uh, medical life science, and uh, everything medical and paramedical and... <laughs> Hallelujah! It's on the way coming. It's on the way just right around the corner here. Mighty, mighty God. Again, I'm speaking. I'm not just, we are not just hoping we are fitting. Don't worry for, for, for other people. If Jesus starts to come, there will be a secular university that will also read law and architecture and other things. But, but the medical, full-fledged medical university with a major diagnostic center, the way they are going to India and other places to look for help, they'll be coming to our direction. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is it possible? Is it doable? It's already done in the name of Jesus. Number three, never be ashamed of your hope. Never be ashamed of your hope. What is the meaning of that? You are turning hope into faith now. Never be ashamed of your hope. Never be ashamed to act out your hope or your expectation. That's the meaning. Never be ashamed to act or behave in the line of your expectation. To behave in the line of what you, you believe is going to happen for you. Don't be ashamed. People may mock you. They may laugh at you. They may call you names. Oh, what do you think you are? Who do you think you are? When, are, when do you think this will happen? Never be ashamed to act out or behave in the line of your expectation. Psalm 119 verse 116, it was so serious that David prayed it as a prayer to God. He said, Psalm 119 verse 116, Uphold me according unto your word that I may live and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Let me not back out. Let me hope continually rejoice in your hope. Rejoice in your hope. Where we read in Romans chapter 5 and in verse 2, Romans chapter 5 and in verse 3, say, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. We rejoice in hope. What is the meaning of that? Celebrate your expectation. That is a very valid operation of faith. Celebrate your expectation. It has not happened yet, but you know it will happen. So you are celebrating the expectation. That was what Abraham did. Against hope, he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. And then he gave God the glory. In, 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 in Romans chapter 4, verse 18, 19, 20, he celebrated his expectation. Don't wait for it to happen before you dance. Dance now. Dance now. Celebrate it now. And 
it will happen. Somebody say amen. amen. If you do those four things I just mentioned, hope has shifted. It has entered faith. And when he entered faith, God must move. God must act. Is there somebody who is shifting gear right now? Uh, I don't know whether you are driving automatic, but I, you are shifting gear now. Stand on your feet with a shout of praise. A loud shout of praise. The loud most shout of praise. Hallelujah. This is what our brothers on the other side used to call. I just preached myself very happy. I think I preached to myself today. How many of you, this message was for you? For me, it's for me. And listen, before the 31st day of December, not November, before December ends, that's before 2020 ends, your hope that has now turned into faith shall produce your results. It shall produce your results. It shall produce your results. It shall produce your results. Well, lift your hands and lift your voice and let's appreciate the King of Kings right now. Appreciate the Lord of Lords right now. Appreciate the I am that I am. The rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. Father, we love you. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. 